you had to petition the King James Version of the Greek. And look differently than the real Bible. But he has a saying. People mind resting on your feet all over the building as we read from God's, God's Word today. Matthew 26, 39 to 49, message. This is about the reason. Going a little ahead, a little ahead, he fell on his face, praying, My God, my Father, if there's any way to get me out of this, this is Jesus talking now. He says, Father, if there's any way to get me out of this, get me out of it. But please, not what I want. You, what do, do what? What do you want? I want to do what you want. When he came back to his disciples, he found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, can't you stick it out with me a single hour? Stay alert. Be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing that you're in danger. There's a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God, but there's another part of you that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. He then left them a second time. Again, he prayed, my father, if there's no other way than this, Drinking this cup to the dread, I'm ready. Do it your way. When he came back, he again found himself asleep. They simply couldn't keep their eyes open. This time, he let them sleep on. And went back the third time and prayed, going over the same ground as last time. He prayed the same way. God, move it if you can. came back the next time, he said, are you going to sleep on and make, make a night of it? My time is up. Some man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let's get going. My betrayer is here. Words were barely out of his mouth when Judas, one of the twelve, showed up. With him a gang from the high priests and religious leaders, banishing swords and clubs. The traitor had worked out a sign with them. That's what he said. The one I kiss, that's the one. Seize him. And he went straight to Jesus, greeted him. How are you, Rabbi? And kissed him. My subject this morning, it's not going to make sense when I first say it, but my subject this morning is this. Embracing Friday. Embracing Friday. I want you to contact somebody, hold a hand, hands on the shoulder, whatever you need to do. Just make sure we're connected all over the building. We're going to pray. I'm going to hear what the Lord has to say to us today. Thank you for this resurrection Sunday morning. Like any other Sunday, we endeavor, as we hear your word, to be transformed in your presence. Be made more like you. We ask you, Lord, to give us understanding of, of our Friday. Sometimes Fridays get hard. But you're about to deposit a word that's going to give us understanding of our hard times. 
and help us to embrace you as we accept some of the things that's happened in our lives. Bless you now. We ask that you would speak to our hearts. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In Jesus' name. On your way to your seat, tell somebody, tell three people around you, embrace your Friday. Embrace your Friday. It is possible for me 
to be concerned about something and not be in fear about it. Okay. In fact, it is, it is my concern that wakes up my faith. It, it, it is my concern about a thing that tells my faith it's time to go to work. I say that because I'm not in fear about anything, but I'm concerned about a lot of things. not worried that things are going to, are not going to turn out right. I, 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 I do believe that good wins over evil. I believe that love is greater than hate. I believe that the sun is going to shine even though the clouds today may be black or the sky today may be blackened with dark clouds. But I am concerned about something. Concerned about our country, the way our country is going at this present time. I'm concerned about race relations. I'm concerned about how we treat each other. I'm concerned about the church. Not, not fearful, but I am concerned. I'm, I'm concerned about our witness. Not just what we say, but how our life matches up with what we say. I'm concerned. I'm concerned with, with how easy it is for us to just fall out with each other. I'm concerned about that. And, 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 and when we fall out, it ain't like we, tomorrow we're okay. We fall out with each other and we hold grudges for years. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned with how, how quick we are to judge other people. But when the light is turned on us, we want folk to give us quick and in a hurry. Concerned with how fast we are to judge, but how slow we are to forgive. That concern that most of us in this room don't don't know the difference between wickedness and weakness. Know the difference between wickedness and weakness and, and our, our ability and, and readiness to forgive gets hung up because we don't know that there is a difference between weakness and wickedness. It's, it's one thing to be a, a victim of somebody's wickedness. But it's a whole other thing to be a, be a casualty of somebody's weakness. Stay with me, y'all. See, there, 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 are, there are some things you, that happen to you that, that you have to pray to God for the strength to adapt to it. Because it ain't going to. And there are other things you have to pray to God for the strength to be able to let go of it because it needs to go somewhere. Hmm. The truth is, he was broken when you met him. She was a mess when you first laid eyes on her. I want to know, can you love the broken me? Is it, is it wickedness or is it weakness? The difference between 
Judas and Peter was that Peter was the devil for a moment. Judas was the devil the whole time. Because there's a difference between a moment of weakness and a life of wickedness. You see, they may have been weak, but they weren't wicked. God, oh, y'all ain't going to listen to me today. The, 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 the thing some people did, they didn't do to you, they actually did to themselves. That you were a casualty of their weakness, not a victim of wickedness. Here's a truth we don't like to look at. Everybody in here got some kind of weakness. If you don't say amen, then say ouch. <laughs> know this, no matter how saved you are, no matter how holy you are, soon and very soon, you're going to blow it again. He's going to blow it again. She's going to blow it again. That joker going to come home and he's going to say something stupid. He's going to get on your nerve. He's going to mess up. He's going to mess up again. I say all of that. I like all of that because I'm concerned. I'm concerned about our family. I'm concerned about our country. I'm concerned about our race relations. I don't believe you can legislate laws to make things right. Because we don't have a, a law problem <laughs> when it comes to things like racism. The problem is not the law because you can legislate and say racism is unlawful. But if a person is made up in their heart, they don't like you. Even though you've made it a law and they can drink from the same fountain you can, they'll just find another way to express their dislike for you. I believe our problem is a law problem. I believe our problem is a heart problem. Now, now I say that, I, I don't say that to challenge your relationship with God. Don't let anybody, anybody look at your situation, look at what you're going through, and decide how close you are to God. Mm. I, I, need, I need three men right quick. I need three men. Come, come here. Where, where's uh, Julia? Uh, come here. Come here. Rub in. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come on up here. Nobody can conclude where you are in your walk with God based on the situation that you're in. If you just stand right beside you, everyone stand right there in front of the cross. Nobody, nobody stand right beside him. Nobody can, can conclude how close you are to God based on the situation that you're in. Our, our destination may, may end up in the same place after it's all over, but on my road to my destination, I might have to take a few detours or a few stops in places I don't want to be. So you can't decide my walk with God based on the situation that, that I'm in. I have three men up here representing, representing uh, Jesus and, and the two other men on the cross. And, and, and let's, let's, just, let's just go back there for a minute and hypothetically and and we're seeing Jesus, Jesus hanging there between two thieves. Here I am, I'm just leaving the, the dealership because I need a new ride. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm driving or riding out of the parking lot on my, on my new ride, and I, I ride by Gal Gotha's Hill on my, on my smack brand new 30 AD one horsepower dump. I'm riding by Galgotha's Hill and I look and I see three men up on the cross. As I pass these three men on the cross, I go, look at that. Three men up there on the cross. And I see all three of them on the cross and one of them, one of them says that he is the son of God. Now, I'm riding by, I, I know, I know Pookie and I know Leroy. And I know Pookie and Leroy stay in trouble all the time. They always, Pookie and Leroy, always in and out of jail. But this other guy who says he's the son of God, I see that he's in the same situation as Pookie and Leroy. I see them all up there hanging on the cross, and they're all in the same situation. Now, now this one says, He's the son of God. Well, if he's who he say he is, why don't he have enough faith to get himself down from the cross? Why, why, why is he not? He says he's anointed. Why is he not anointed enough to get himself out of that situation? You know how folk would tell you. I thought you were saved. Why, why is it that, that he, he is up there with, with Puka and Leroy, who I know ain't no good? One man, one man is at the gateway of heaven, but he goes to hell. Another man is at the gateway of hell, but he goes to heaven. But they're in the same situation. One man is, is looking at is looking at his 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 uh, predicament. He's looking at his predicament based on his situation. The other man is looking at his predicament based on revelation. One man says to, says, to, says to the man in the middle, if you are the son of God, get us down from this cross. Get down and you get me down while you're getting down. We, we, and, and, and he said, in other words, I ought not be up here. So he's looking at his situation. This man says, Lord, This man said, if you are. This man said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus doesn't answer this man because Jesus never answers an if. Either you know who he is or you don't know who he is. This man says, Lord, he affirmatively said, I know who you are. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. One man died in sin. One man died from sin. One man died for sin. But they're all in the same situation. Y'all ain't gonna help me here today. One man died in the will of God. One man died out of the will of God. One man died for the will of God. But they all in the same situation. One man died rejecting God. One man died believing God. One man died as God. But they all in the same situation. So you can't look at folk that's in a bad
sit down with just a moment. I'm going to call on each in just a second. We, we call, we, we call, we call this, this past Friday, this past Friday, what do we call it? This past Friday, we call it Good Friday. Right? We call this past Friday Good Friday. The, 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 the truth is, the only reason Friday is good is when you're able to see it through the eyes of Sunday. If you ain't seeing it through the eyes of Sunday, Friday, ain't no way good. I mean, if you're standing in your Sunday, you can look back at Friday and say it was good for me. But if you're standing in your Thursday, Lord have mercy, looking ahead to your Friday, you worry all day Thursday because you're dreading Friday. Friday ain't so good on Thursday. Lord, I help you with that. Friday gets worse on Friday. Because now I'm all up in it on Friday. And it's not good to go through what you got to go through. Even on Saturday, Friday's still not good. Lord, help me here today. And, and get this, y'all. Here's where a lot of us are. A lot of us are stuck in Saturday. <laughs> because we've gone through some things. And ain't nothing changed. When Jesus went through what he went through, I, mean, I imagine the, 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 the Jerusalem Post came out with the headline on the front page that says, It's over. Done. Now, the disciples were stuck in Saturday, locked away in a room with no hope of anything ever changing. I want to say this to you. A lot of us in this room have been through a lot of things, right? Yeah. We've been through some stuff, but, but here's what I want you to know. God can never heal what you are not honest about. Come here, come here, Brother Randy. I need Brother Billy, Brother Judy, come here. God can't heal what you are not honest about. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, Brother Randy, if you just stand right there. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Billy, grab that blue thing, that blue tray right there. Come over here, one of you, whoever's going to grab it. Just a blue, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you some questions. I gave a test pilot, but right, this is just one. I gave a test pilot, just one question to my son, the Jarvis. <laughs> he fell on the floor because he didn't want to answer my question. <laughs> But these questions are not, not where you are now, but I want to know any, at any period in your life, any period, any period in your life. Give, give me what we got. Bro, Randy, I want to know, have you ever stolen anything in your life? Put that up there. Have you ever, give me some tape, oh, some have you ever, oh, Bro, Randy, have you ever, Gossip, talked about somebody in your life. Have you ever, Brother Randy, been untrustworthy in your life? Get, grab both of them. Just get both of them. Have you ever, Brother Randy, get personal now? Have you ever been lustful in your life? Yeah. 
been dishonorable in your life. person 
they did it would apologize. What if they don't? What if what if what they've done did to me so bad, but they refuse to apologize and they refuse to change? What if they don't say, I'm sorry?
that Jesus healed was there cheering on his crucifixion. Roman soldiers were there gambling over his robe. Didn't care that they valued what he had on him more than the man himself. Jesus looks out over the crowd and then looks up to the Father. And we miss it every time. We miss it, y'all. We miss it. He looks up to the Father and says, Father, forgive him. What blesses me is not what he said. What blesses me is what he didn't say. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. He did not say, Father, I forgive them. Because he understands. He, he understands the level of your pain. And he's not going to put that on you. He, he's not going to throw that on you and say, all right, you got to forgive him. Yeah. He's not going to put that on you because he knows how hard it is. Yeah. He knows the struggle that goes along with it. Oh, I know we got holy folk in here today that going to tell you, oh, you got to forgive. Oh, you got to forgive. No, Jesus didn't say, I forgive them. <laughs> he said, Father, I can't. But I give them to you. And what I can't let go of, God, I put it in your hands. What I can't forget about, God, I put it in your hands. What I can't get past, God, I put it in your hands. Because it hurt me too bad. It, it did too much damage to me. I can't let it go. So please don't ask me. I will ask you to show up your mercy. I'm so glad that he understands Trust me with it. I'm asking you to come to a place that you can't change it. I'm asking you to come to a place that you'll let it go. You might not get there today. 
whisper. I choose to yell. Sometimes my sometimes my yell is a cry for victory. Sometimes my yell is a cry for help. You gotta come to the place where you don't whisper. statement. I've hurt some people in my life. Next statement. told you my secrets, I'm afraid you'll think less of me. Final statement. I have unforgiveness in my heart. Put those hands and touch yourself and say me too. Yeah. 
genius of your humanity not let you off the hook of your willingness to allow your brilliance and your confusion to coexist you don't have to understand it all you don't have to have it all figured out Live. How do you live in the confliction of your conviction? No, no more waiting. No more waiting for somebody to come by and roll away the stone. You've gone, you've gone through your Thursday. experienced the horror of your Friday. You've lived in the aftermath of your Saturday. Now it's time to step into your Sunday. Now it's time to embrace your Friday from the position of your Sunday. Don't look at it through Thursday's eyes. Don't look at it through Friday's eyes. Don't look back at it through Saturday's eyes. You got to see it through the eyes of Sunday. Because only then can you understand, can you understand that God was trying to show you that God was trying to show you what agape love looks like. That no matter how bad, how bad it was, love still stands. Please understand, please understand, in the same way that you distribute love, it's the way it comes back to you. In the same way that you give forgiveness, it's the way God forgives you. I want you to touch three people around you. I want you to touch three people around you. I want you to look every one of them in the eye, every one of them in the eye, and tell them maybe you need to let it go. In 
moment of honesty, in a moment of honesty, in a moment of honesty, here it is, in a moment of honesty, I want you to look at those people that said that to you, and I want you to tell them, that ain't easy. Jesus understands that. He knows. He knows it ain't easy. Which is why he wanted to put himself in your position when he was on the cross. And he didn't want to say, I forgive them. Because he knows it ain't easy. Because a lot of times that's something you just can't do. Jesus said, I'm going to show you what you can do. You can say, Father, forgive them. Everybody stand.